Welcome to our lore review for the 8th episode of the second season of The Mandalorian. As always, references are brought to you by our personal collection of books, the Cardass Library. Glasses, or spectacles, are not uncommon in the Star Wars galaxy. They date all the way back to 1978 in the original Marvel run. They showed up throughout other Expanded Universe material, including West End Games books. Of course, they also appeared in Ewoks, the Battle for Endor. How many people were on board the first Death Star? Here are the stats for the first space station. We have to remember, on the second one, there were probably many contractors still constructing it. Ah oh, shit, are we back to this again? Tornado DDT by the Outer Rim Women's Champion. Oribish translations on the right. Oribish translations on the left. Many of the foods seen on the menu originated in the expanded universe, including novels. Here are some photos from the first two visual dictionaries. Different ships being visible to each other while in hyperspace is not confined to this episode. Here's a shot from one of the Clone Wars episodes. Oribish translations. Snapmare Takedown by the Women's Champion. While the Clone Wars cartoon never definitively established that the Darksaber had to be won in battle, if you look at the episodes and what happened in them, one could infer that. The ease with which this Jedi with a green lightsaber dispatches these dark troopers seems to indicate a regression in battle droid technology. In the expanded universe, Phase 3 dark troopers were rare and extremely difficult to defeat. In Survivor's Quest by Timothy Zahn, Luke and Mara had an extremely difficult time taking out one droidica. A Jedi Master and a Padawan who would go on to defeat a Sith Lord later in the movie had to flee from two droidicas. In the Expanded Universe, Bib Fortuna did escape the Sail Barge explosion, but he had his brain transferred into a spider walker by the Bomar monks who lived at Jabba's palace. Jabba's criminal empire was broken up and absorbed by several other crime bosses, including a couple of huts. Eventually, Bib Fortuna would have his brain transferred into the body of another Twi'lek named Firith Olan. As with most episodes of The Mandalorian, this one was rife with plot holes and member berries. Appropriating technical details from the expanded universe and bringing back the star of the franchise in bad CGI is not going to win this channel over. 